All right, so in this video, I'm going to discuss what are called Lewis dot structures or Lewis dot diagrams. And you know, up until this point, we've been representing in our um, different orbital diagrams, electron configuration, noble gas configuration, all of the electrons that make up a um, the atom of an element. Now, what we're going to do with Lewis dot structures is we are only going to represent what are called the valence electrons. So let me just write that term down for you. It's valence electrons. And a valence electron are electrons in the outermost shell or outermost energy level. And the reason why these are important are these are the ones that are sort of on the edge of the atom, and they're the ones that are going to be um, involved in chemical interactions and sort of determine how a um, atom behaves. Okay, so those valence or outer shell electrons are the most important. Now, if we look at the periodic table, we know that based on the columns or where they're located, we can figure out their electron configuration. And any elect or any atom that's in column one is going to have uh, one electron in its outermost shell. So it's going to have an S1 electron be its outermost shell. In here, in column two, it's going to be S2. In column three, and we're just going to ignore all of these D's for now. Just in terms of dot diagrams, we don't even need to think about them. Over here, they're going to have uh, P1s as their outermost. These will have P2s, P3s, P4s, P5s, and P6 here. Now, if we add them up, we can figure out the electrons that are the, in the outermost shell, or the valence electrons. So if you're in column one, the outermost shell is going to be the, in the S, and therefore you are going to have one electron. If you're in column two, it's two. If you're over here in column three, it's three, because you have S1, S2, and a P1. If you're in column four, it's four, and then it's five, and then it's six, and then it's seven, and then it's eight. Now, helium is the exception. Helium is actually going to be a two. So what your column number is determines how many valence electrons you have. Okay? Now, there, you can never have more than eight valence electrons in your outermost shell because of our order of fill. So remember, this is like uh, shell four. And then you fill up 4s2. Before you go to the, the d's of the 4, you do the 3s, right? You go back an energy level. So these d are in the previous energy level. So the fact that the s orbital of the next fills before the d of the previous makes it so the maximum number of valence electrons you can have is 8, right? Now, when we draw the dot structure, we're going to show the electrons in the s and p orbital. So we draw the symbol, and then over here, we're going to put the first two electrons. So those will be the, the s orbital electrons. And then the p orbitals, we kind of distribute around like we're following Hun's rule. Only one can fit per place. So we'll put like, and this, this order is not as important, but, you know, roughly like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And each other side represents the the three p orbitals okay so if i'm going to show the electron dot structure let's just pick one let's pick phosphorus so phosphorus is in the fifth column so it's got five valence electrons so i would put p for the symbol and then i put the first two over here and i draw them like dots which is why it's called a dot diagram and then i'm going to put three four and five around the other side so that would be the dot structure for phosphorus. Right? Let's do another one. Let's look at strontium. Strontium is in column two, so it's going to have two valence electrons. So I just write the symbol for strontium, and then I put the first two here and here. Okay, let's do one more. Let's try and do one for krypton. Okay, so krypton's a noble gas. It's going to be completely full, have it shelled full. So it's going to have two in the S, and then one, two, three, four, five, six in the P. 
right? So just keep in mind that dot structures show the outermost energy levels. We can determine which, how many they have just by looking at what column they are in, ignoring D and F for now. And we use dots in a specific sequence in order to represent those valence electrons.